watching Notes and Nine. Hello, and welcome to Notes and Nine. I'm David Leedy. Episode 125, Accelerator, Working with Windows. So who doesn't do Windows these days? Steve Ballmer. Okay, um, in this show, John Jardin is going to come back, and he's going to continue his Accelerator series. And uh, there's many episodes left to go. I already have the second one um, queued up. Um, and what he's going to do today is go over into, if you follow his blog series, this is Chapter 4. And he's going to show you in Accelerator how to just kind of work with Windows, move things on the screen around, uh, things like that. So with that being said, let's go to the demo. Hi there, and welcome. I'm John Jardine from Ukuvuma, and this is Chapter 4 of my Accelerator mobile development blog series. In today's video, I'm going to introduce the Windows control and show you how to make use of it within your mobile application. I'll also touch on the layout of the window control and how to position child elements within it. For those that have just started with this blog series, you can go to my blog at johnjardine.ukuvuma.co.za and on the right hand side under tutorial series you'll see a link that will take you to this page which will show you the rest of the blog posts that have been published as part of season one. We're currently on chapter four windows. So let's begin by going over a few points regarding the window control. First thing that you need to know is that a window is a top level container that can contain other UI controls like fields, tables, buttons, etc. Very similar to an X page or an HTML page. While windows can contain other controls, they generally cannot be contained inside most controls except when it comes to navigation groups, split windows and tab groups. These controls will be discussed later on in this blog series. A windows two primary methods are open and close. On open, you add the window and its child views to the application render stack. On close, you remove the window and its children. Now in the simulator uh, in front of you, you'll see that I have a window with a background of white and I've got four child controls that are laid out underneath each other. This, the button over here, open window 2, will take us to our second window, which has a yellow background and two child controls and if I close this I will get taken back to the first window. If I click on open window 3 it will open a third window with a blue background and a button that says close. So let's quickly go and take a look at the code that makes up these three windows. In Titanium Studio open up the Accelerator S1 database or application excuse me that we created in chapter 3. Um, open up the app.js file and remove all the code that that existed over there. This was the default code that Titanium created when we set up our application in Chapter 3. If you take a look at the code in front of you, you'll see that I have a comment for Window 1 and these are all the controls that make up Window 1. I do the same for Window 2 and Window 3. Underneath that I have our events for the four buttons and I'll explain that shortly and finally I have the launching of the window 1 at the end of the at the end of the file. So starting by window 1 you'll see that I have a window object by the name of win1. I've given it a background color of white and a layout of vertical which I'll explain shortly. I also then have created a view with a background color of red and a width and a height. A view is very similar to a div tag or panel in XPages. I then have a button or two of them, one is open window 2 and open window 3. And finally I have a uh, text field with, and I gave it a border style of rounded with a width of 200. Underneath all of these um, controls that I've set up, I then go and add each one of them to my window by saying win1.add and then the necessary controls. And that's what you see in this example here. Next up we have window 2 which has a yellow background and a layout of horizontal. Again I'll explain this shortly. I have a button and a field that I add to this window by saying win2.add button 3 and field 2. Finally I have the window 3 which has a blue background and I set the full screen to true. I'll explain this now. This has a button uh, called close window 3 that I add by saying win3.add. 
I then have events for all of the four buttons. These are event listeners that look out, that listen for the click events. And you'll see that button 1 will open up window 2, button 2 will open up window 3. That's these two buttons over here. Button 3 will close window 2 and button 4 will close window 3. If I have window 2 open, but here's button 3 that will close window 2 and here's button 4 that will close window 3. Very standard stuff. At the end I have the launch window 1. So this is, this is the official running of a method in our app.js file. The rest of the code just set up our environment. We needed this to physically launch our application. Alright, so let's just go take a look back over here. So the first thing to remember is that when a window is closed, it's not removed from memory, only from the render stack. And I'll show you an example now. If we have our window 1 and I go into this field and I enter a value of test 1, and I go and open up window 2, and I go and enter value here of test 2. If I close window 2, it gets removed from the stack, but it still remains in memory because window 1 still has the value of test 1 inside it. And if I go and open up window 2 again, test 2 still sits inside that field. Alright, so that's important to note. Another thing is, as a default, the window control will occupy the entire screen except for the navigation bar, status bar, and tab groups tab bar. Now, in this example, we're not using the tab group and the navigation control or the navigation bar is not showing, but you will see the status bar on top. In order to in order for your screen to cover everything including the status bar, you would have to go and set the full screen property of the window to true. This is what we did for window 3. We set the full screen to true. So if we go back over here, you'll notice that when I open up window 3, it covers everything including the status bar, whereas the other two only cover um, the, the, the screen and still show the status bar. So let's quickly discuss a few points about layout and positioning. Titanium uses a grid coordinate system whose values correspond to points or density independent pixels to accommodate different display uh, densities. Uh, th this is to accommodate iPads, iPhones, Androids and, and different screen resolutions. Elements in Titanium are positioned relative to their parent container. As you can see over here, these four elements are positioned to the parent container which is the window. The position properties one can use for UI controls are top, bottom, left and right. Now we haven't used these yet, we're going to use them shortly. The default layout for a window control is absolute, meaning that your UI controls will need to be manually positioned in your window. This we did in Window 3, where we, we didn't define the layout for Window 3, which means the default is absolute. When we added the button to Window 3, it gave a default position of a, a center because we didn't specify its bottom, top, left or right uh, properties. So let's go back to our window objects. On top of here we created a window with the background of white, this is our win one, and we gave a layout of vertical. When we specified this layout, it meant that any child control that gets added to this window will be positioned from the top and will be um, placed underneath each other which is what we have over here. Now if we want to override this we would need to go and specify these uh, controls top left right and uh, bottom properties and we can do that by going let's say view one we can go and say fine I want to uh, place this 10 dp from the top of the parent window. For button 1, we want to place uh, button 1 10 dp from the left. Oh, what am I doing? And you'll notice I'm not specifying dp, it's because density, indepe uh, density independent pixels are the default uh, unit of measure when, when, when working with uh, top left right and bottom. Button 2 will say right 10 and field 1 
will specify top um, 20. So let's save this and go and take a look. Oh, let's just put a comma there. And go and run our application in the iPhone simulator. All right. So you'll now see that our controls are sitting more or less in this uh, same place that they were, but they kind of floating a little bit to the left, to the right. And let me go through this quickly. When we said that the view needs a top of 10 dp, uh, because the view was the first control that was added to the window, it got positioned 10 points from the top of the parent win uh, parent control, which is the window. Then we added the button and we specified that it should be t uh, 10 points to the left which is what you see here. Ten, uh, button 2 was 10 points to the right, which is what you see here. And for field 1, we didn't specify left or right, but we said that the top needs to be 20 points. Now, this, because we're using a layout of vertical, this doesn't mean 20 points from the parent control, which is the window. It means 20 points from the last, uh, or from the previous control that was added before this control was added. So in other words, 20 points from the, th uh, the second button that was added. So if we go take a look at the second window, you'll see that the layout is horizontal and not vertical. And if we go and open up the second window, instead of the child controls sitting beneath each other, they now sit uh, next to each other and they will wrap in case you run out of space. But it follows a very, uh, the very same principle as having a vertical layout. And finally, on the on the absolute layout, which is what we use for window 3 because we don't specify um, any kind of layout, but if we wanted to, by not specifying a layout is the same as saying absolute. It's the same as providing that property. So the only thing to remember about um, specifying an absolute layout is you have to go and position your controls, otherwise they're all going to go and sit in the center of the screen like it does over here and that's all good and well except if you want to go and let's say let's go and add this view again I'm going to copy this view control and under window 3 I'm going to go and paste it with and call it view 2 and then I'm going to say window 3 dot add view 2 so let's save this and go and preview it in the iPhone simulator. Right, so let's open up Windows 3 and we'll see that the view was added to the center but what we did was we specified a top property so it didn't overwrite the button. If we had not specified the top it would have been placed in the center and because it got added after the button it would have uh, the button would have been hidden because the views dimensions are a bit uh, bigger than what the buttons are. So it's just one thing to be very careful about is when using absolute um, layouts you'll need to manually go and specify where you want your controls uh, to to exist in inside the parent container in this case the window. And that concludes chapter 4. Uh, I hope this was helpful to everyone and you can see that working with Windows is, a, is, is pretty simple. Um, in our next video we'll, we'll discuss tab groups and how to use windows inside those tab groups and also how to manipulate a couple of animated features. But until then, have a good day. Bye. And that's the demo. I thank John for coming on. I, I know I, I'm excited about this series and uh, can't wait for the next one. And if you have any questions for me that's really not Accelerator related, uh, here's my contact information and I thank you for your time.